Invincible Honest Trailer, let's do this. I feel like the streaming trailer thing isn't, oh God, I walked, I talked over my name. Relationship focused and hyper violent comes a reinvention of the superhero genre. Listen, I, I love the fact that I got a name check in this. Uh, it was a real big ego boost. Uh, I live in a house where my wife and kids are in no way impressed with what I do. Uh, and so that was a, that was a pretty cool moment. But uh, uh, using it to point out my crutch, dirty pool, dirty pool. Uh, am I the violence guy? Sadly, yes. But uh, let's try not to draw too much attention to it. I, uh, there's some originality to my work, right? Maybe, no, all right. Makes it more grounded, relationship focused, and hyper violent. Look out, movie musicals, you're about to get Kirkman. I, I don't like the Cats reference. I mean, I think, uh, I, think, I think it's dated. I think it's really, you know, that we're doing this a little bit after uh, this Honest trailer came out. Uh, because uh, there was a massive gap between Invincible 1 and 2. Let's just go ahead and address that. I think that the Honest Trailer, you guys at Fandom, uh, you're better than that. You're better than that. We're, uh, now we're looking at a cat's joke, like uh, two years too late. Score comes another grim story about how superheroes would behave if they just, were real. We'll just move on over the Lex Luthor, Jeff Bezos uh, uh, comparison, because I don't agree with that. I think he's a great man. <laughs> Meet Mark Grayson, an ordinary teen who discovers he's secretly part alien and possibly part Canadian. Sorry, I'm so back. the Canada shirt. A lot of people ask about the Canada shirt. I don't think I've ever talked about it publicly. We went to Toronto on a vacation, and uh, my son, who was younger at the time, I'm going to say 13, I don't remember, and uh, uh, he went to a gift shop and they had a, that red shirt that just said Canada across the front of it. And he thought it was hilarious that there was a shirt that just said Canada and uh, had nothing else on it. And so for a good two and a half year period, my son wore nothing but Canada shirts. And so Corey Walker, who's, you know, Uncle Corey to my kids, uh, dear family friend, co-creator of Invincible, uh, when he designed Young, Mark, he put my son's Canada shirt on Mark, so that is the reason for the Canada shirt. So that's a, that's a fun Easter egg that only my family likes. The entire Canadian animation team on season one thinks that it is a reference to them. It is not. Sorry about this. I've been an a and I'm sorry I didn't realize that sooner. Sorry. 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 Hi, sorry. 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 I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. I know. I'm sorry. I suck. He's in every band. So the Simon Rassio, uh, uh, who's the, the co-showrunner on Invincible, we, we work it on season one, and he is Canadian. And so I give him crap every time he throws out a sorry instead of sorry. Uh, and so he actually uh, uh, now uses the English pronunciation of sorry because uh, he's sick of me giving him crap about it. And I'm very proud of that. Go USA. For the Zoomer generation, which means he's extremely depressed, horny, and resents having to actually do anything with his abilities. I can't believe I still have to exercise. But he'll have to harness all of his strength to battle exotic villains, protect his friends, and gain one single clue across an entire season of television. Hey, I didn't invent the rules. What rules? It's kind of like peeing your pants on purpose. What? What's going on? What? Oh, okay. So I love that uh, Mark is a terrible superhero at season one, uh, that it was by design. Um, the idea is that Invincible is gonna go for, I'm gonna say a hundred seasons. And the, you know, ideas that we're gonna to get to see him grow and evolve and change over time and actually become a competent, uh, impressive superhero who actually is capable of doing things with his abilities. But we started him at a very different place in season one and he is terrible and he does lose almost every fight. And uh, I love that the audience has embraced that and uh, seeing it keyed in uh, uh, here in this Honest trailer was pretty neat. There's so much you don't know, Mark. What? Okay, you're Superman and your dad is Thanos. Mark, you are a comic book nerd. You should get this shit immediately. Get to know wild characters like Omni-Man, a guy with the most intimidating superpower of all. 
dad's strength. He's Mark's father and a clever subversion of every boy. So Omni-Man has a mustache because my father had a mustache uh, growing up and uh, Corey Walker's dad had a mustache growing up. And so we just associate mustaches with dads. Uh, and so we were like, we'll give him a mustache so he looks like a dad. And then Invincible is a very, very serious drama. Uh, that is a serious character study with serious stakes, but we thought it would be hilarious if there was an alien race that just had mustaches for no reason whatsoever. And so that's why the mustache then became a Viltrumite thing. And I love, as the show progresses, we will get to see a wide variety of different mustaches on our Viltrumite characters as we introduce more and more of them. And uh, does it detract from the seriousness that we're trying to achieve with the show? Yes. Is it possibly a mistake? Probably. But uh, do we enjoy it? Would we change course now at this point? No, not at all. So uh, it's, uh, it's, it, we have our fun. Every boy's fantasy that their dad could beat up your dad. Oh, no! <laughs> like this. There's also Amber, Mark's girlfriend, who totally cracked his secret identity. Totally. You know? I'm not an idiot. I figured it out weeks ago. Who was that? The police are on their way. Where the hell did you go? Yeah, maybe she was playing, uh, uh, you know, cool there. I don't know. Or maybe that was a mistake. Who knows? The Guardians of the Globe, the Washington Generals of superhero teams. They're here to do two important things. Kill time until Invincible or Omni-Man shows up. And I think this is borderline too critical, but I'll be okay with it, you know. It's, it's funny, it's one of those things where I, I enjoy Honest Trailers myself, and I watch them all the time. And then to see that thing you enjoy turned on you, is, uh, is pretty heartbreaking and I don't enjoy it. But I'll allow it because it's fun when I'm seeing you guys do it to somebody else. So it's fine. But I mean, I think that they are very capable superheroes who do cool things, but uh, you know, maybe their scenes are killing time. I can't really say. 24 years old. I'm a 30 year old genius in a teenage boy's body. I never expanded myself to that extent. That was intense. Explore a vast and entire. So look. Is almost everything happening in the show involving Monster Girl and Robot and their children bodies uh, super weird and uncomfortable and easily something that you could make fun of? Yeah, absolutely. And the whole point of that entire weird thing is to draw attention to the fact that superhero universes are absolutely bizarre and we're trying to embrace that in Invincible. Uh, these are two characters that are uh, adults that are trapped in child bodies, but it's something that you don't really discuss in an uncomfortable way, uh, but we do acknowledge it and uh, you know follow those stories to where they're gonna go. Um, and I think that having that weirdness there where the audience is watching it going, I don't know what to think of this. This is this is very bizarre. Uh, is kind of like paying tribute to the fact that like Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson like lived together, and then they would hang out at night and go solve crimes. Grab it with your teeth. And Dick Grayson wasn't Bruce Wayne's son, and people make endless jokes about it. But in the purity of comic form, it was something that was just fine for many, many decades. And there are many examples of weird things like that existing in comics that are just kind of like understood and glossed over. And so we're trying to like pay tribute to that, but we get it, it's weird. For a vast and entirely original comic book universe, when it was first published back in 2003, that took care to update some of the old tropes but still has a ton of jokes you'll be hearing the second time around. Like clones who can't decide which one is the original. I'm the original. He told me you're the clone. What do you think he told me? You're the clone? Fashion designers who secretly specialize in hero costumes. I'll strive for iconic. Knock it! A friendly alien voiced by Seth Rogen. Are you using your time now? It's probing time. And robot-headed mafia bosses. I've got money! It gives me no joy to do this because Clamps will be doing it. Geez, there are multiple animated comedies featuring wacky robot godfathers? Maybe we should try a new genre once in a while. Hey, anyone up for bringing back the horny ski comedy? Oh my 
I think we're going to get started on that horny ski comedy uh, superhero show. Uh, I love the acknowledgement that uh, I think aside from Futurama, all of those things did happen in Invincible first. It just took us an embarrassingly long time to actually get around to adapting that comic. Uh, we're celebrating our 20th anniversary this year, and I feel very old. But uh, thankfully, we're now doing it, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll eventually get to later issues where other people didn't do things that we had done in the comic already, so it seems uh, like we're uh, second to the party. So Marvel at a show so dense with A-list celebrities, it's super clear that Amazon can afford to give its drivers bathroom breaks, or at least improve the animation when it's not part of the fight scene. In I'm just going to laugh quietly at this part. of a 90s cartoon with tons of fun twists, recurring jokes, and... Hey, wait, I wasn't done. Okay, why would you drop the credits like that? The episode clearly isn't over. There's like two more minutes left. See? Starring. So... Uh, I love that the after credits thing is becoming a gag. It was something that really started with the Iron Man movie and then has gone to some pretty like interesting and ridiculous places in a lot of different movies over this now like almost two decades of time uh, since like after credits thing became after credits became a regular thing and it's something that we love playing with on Invincible. Uh, we do it every single episode. Sometimes they're monumental scenes. Sometimes they're like some kind of cool addendum to something that happened in the episode. But what's really neat is with season two, we are doing some super off the wall bizarre things with the after credit sequences that I'm really excited for people to get to see. So uh, uh, it's, it's really a lot of fun. Young Justice. Give me pictures. These are always great. Wait, I'll do it. How I pet your mother. I wish that one's a little mean. Let's go. Nick Calm. The Pink Ranger. Now, oh, come on. on. Jason Manzukas. Hey, robot's not dull. Do Jason Manzukas is a great actor. Probably explode something. Oh, maybe you nuts. And Subway. He does do a lot of uh he does do a lot of ad living, I will say. Sometimes too much, Jason. We write these scripts for a reason. Don't go too far. Sometimes it hurts my feelings. But no, Jason is, uh, uh, he's a real character and, and uh, a lot of the best lines that Rex Blood says are just things that he would throw out in a recording booth that uh, we ended up keeping in because we thought they were funny. Did you guys notice the Invincible shirt that I put in that other movie where I voiced an alien? You see, you plant the seed and then you f the plant. <laughs> Don't give Seth Rogen credit for that. That shirt is there because of me. I actually got contacted by a guy named Clinton Trucks who was helping uh, uh, Simon and Nick, because they, they wrote that movie, uh, put together their Comic-Con scene. There's a, there were big Comic-Con scenes shot for Paul, and uh, at the last minute, Marvel and DC didn't allow them to use anything, and so he called me, and I rounded up a bunch of people from Image Comics, and we gave them the rights. And But yeah, we gave them all kinds of stuff, and then they ended up uh, having this Invincible shirt in the movie, but in one of the cut scenes, because they established that Simon's character was an Invincible fan, uh, Kristen Wiig, who's in the movie, actually wears Adam Eve's costume. And they filmed scenes at, for the end of the movie that they didn't use where they're at another Comic-Con and she's with them in cosplay. And uh, Corey Walker was on set, I was on set, Ryan Otley was on set, and we got pictures with Kristen Wiig in an Adam Eve costume. She even had like a, a, a red wig and uh, it, it was pretty cool, but uh, it didn't end up getting used in the, in the movie. I don't know if you've seen the, the Aaron Sorkin videos where they'll take like, like full lines of dialogue or full phrases that he puts in every single project. And it'll just be like eight straight minutes of people saying the same thing over and over again in like 12 shows and 13 movies. And I live in fear of someone doing that with my work.